Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to talk a little bit about the 555 IC once again. First of all, let me apologize for the noise you're going to hear. The gas company is tearing up the streets in my town and there's not much I can do about it. So we've talked about the 555 timer before and using it to generate a pulse. So that's what we're doing here. We're using it to generate a pulse for a pulse with a modulation circuit to control a higher current circuit such as a motor. So we're set up here in the standard A stable mode. Pin one going to ground, pin two goes to pin six, and is also connected to ground through a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Pin three is our output. Now we've got a couple jumpers on that we'll see later, and also to this LED. Okay, pin four, our reset pin, is held high by going to VCC. Pin five goes to ground via another 1 microfarad, 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Pin 6 connects back to pin 2 as we talked about. It also connects to one side of this variable resistor. This is a potentiometer, but since I'm only using an outside and the middle, it's acting as a variable resistor. Pin 7 is connected to VCC through a 10K resistor and also as a voltage divider through our variable resistor. And pin 8 is going to VCC. Now the reason for that, like I said, is to set up our A-stable multivibrator. And this current setup here is giving us a frequency of 393 hertz. And I have it on its lowest setting here. And if I bring in the meter here, you can see on duty cycle, we are getting 67 0.5%. And again, if you look at the oscilloscope view, you can see that square wave as well. Now, if I adjust the variable resistor, you can see that our on time has increased. And in fact, we are up to 74.7 or call it 75% on time or a 75% duty cycle. So we can use this output pulse to drive lots of things, but in its current state, it is best served driving a digital signal, nothing that is going to draw too much current. But we can change that by adding a little bit to this circuit. So let's zoom out here. And I'm gonna take the multimeter here out of the circuit because you understand that the voltage basically is staying the same and the only thing we're really changing is the on time now what we want to drive in this case you can drive whatever you want but in this case we're going to drive one of these little motors that are commonly used for the Arduino robots so let's bring it in here Now, the way I have this set up is through an NPN transistor. And let's zoom in here again. So if we bring our output from the 555 timer over here, and I'm gonna run it through a diode into the base of this transistor, the collector is going to VCC. The emitter is driving the positive of our motor. And the negative of the motor is plugged into the ground rail here. Always important that we connect our grounds together. Okay. Now you'll see here I have an outside power source and that is my DC current supply or DC lab bench power supply. And what we're doing is we're using the pulse from the 555 timer to turn on and off this transistor, which is acting as a switch to turn on and off our motor. 
but the motor is not being powered by the same voltage and current source as the 555. It is separated. It is being powered by an outside source. So if I power on the motor here, you can see it's turning real nice. I'm giving it five volts and it is taking uh, 83 milliamps right now. Now, if we look at the oscilloscope, you can see that there is a lot of noise there. Even with that diode there preventing backfeed, we're still getting a lot of noise. And the way to control that is to take another diode and put it across the motor. You see the stripe on the diode indicating the cathode going to ground. And as we do that, you can see that our signal has cleaned up significantly. Although our current has also gone up significantly, we're now at 500 milliamps. But if you're concerned about noise in your circuit, you're definitely gonna need to have a diode on there to prevent the noise. So that's it for this quick little tutorial on driving a high current source from a 555 pulse wave generator. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. And if you liked it, give me the big thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.